Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and today I'd like to introduce you to some of our new exciting lampshade making kits. Over here we have our rounded rectangle kit and as you can see it's a lovely kit with rounded corners and these come in three different sizes which are 20 by 10 centimetres, 30 by 15 centimetres and 40 by 20 centimetres. I also have here our square lampshade making kit and these have the rounded edges and these come in 20, 30 and 40 centimetre kits. So both of the instructions for these are exactly the same so you can make them up in exactly the same way and today I'm going to show you how to make up a 30 centimetre rounded square lampshade. Hi, I'm Sam from Needcraft and today I'm going to show you how to make a rounded square lampshade from one of our fantastic professional lampshade making kits. So this particular kit, as you can see, is really modern and stylish. It has a lovely, lovely rounded corner here on the edge of all of the corners of the lampshade, making it really nice and soft with no hard edges. Now, this particular type of um, frame and lampshade is not something you really see on the high street. So it's perfect for adding a unique touch to your home. And of course, you can use a covering of your own choice. These kits come in 20, 30 and 40 centimetres. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make up a 30 centimetre kit. So let's have a look and see what's in the box. So here on the box, as you can see, really handily, it tells you your covering size that you need. And for this one, um, we need around about 124 centimetres um, by 26 centimetres. So not a lot of fabric, something that might be left over from a previous project, or it might be something where you've made cushions or curtains and you have a little bit of the fabric left over. So inside of the box, we have the frames. And the two frames to make up the lampshade, this one is your plain frame, as you can see, and this one is your utility frame. Now, the utility frame has a central piece where your light fitting will go. Um, and as you can see in here, it's quite a small circle, and that circle is perfect for a UK light fitting like this one, which is a B22. Also, this can be taken out quite easily and this will give us a larger central fitting and that's useful for a European fitting, which is an E27. So it doesn't matter what type of fittings that you have in your home, either of those will work in here. Also, just to mention that these kits are also perfect for either a pendant shade that would be hanging down in the centre of a room or also to sit on a lamp base as we have here with this one as well. You also have some lampshade making PVC which is handily rolled up for you um, inside of your kit. I have one here unrolled, so I'll just show you that one. So this is professional lampshade making PVC. It's not just any old sticky back plastic. So you can be assured that you're using the most professional products on the market. And this is what you would see in everyday um, lampshades on the high street as well. It's anti-static, it's anti-yellowing, and it's also fire resistant and has been rigorously tested. It's been tested by the Lighting Association Laboratories and has also passed the British Standard Glow Wire test as well. Just to turn this over, and you'll see on the other side, it has um, a sticky backing paper and this has grid lines on it. You don't need to worry about those because this has already been cut to size for you, which makes it a really easy project to put together. So you don't need to think about this too much because the work's already done for you. Also to mention, on the actual uh, PVC on the front, a kiss cut has been scored and you can just see when I bend that back there, the kiss cut. And this is a part we're going to remove later to create a fabric margin at the top and bottom of the shade. So there's one at both sides. So that's your lampshade making PVC. Just going back to our box, you also have in here a finishing tool and this is for the last stage of the demonstration and we're going to tuck all of the fabric 
underneath our frames to give a truly professional finish. You can see it has a point here and also a serrated edge and I'll show you how to use that a little bit later on. We also have a sticky back tape. Now this is a double sided high tack tape and this is one of the main components that holds our shade together. As you can see it's flexible and it's also transparent and we're going to use this at two different stages as part of the demonstration um, and I'll take you through how to use that. Finally in our box we have our instructions. So these are a photo pictorial instruction that takes you step by step through how to make your shade. Lots of hints and tips in here as well, as you can see. So really nice bright photographs showing you exactly how to make the shade up. So really useful to just check step by step that you're making everything correctly. So let's move on to making up the shade itself. In terms of fabrics, I would always recommend a woven fabric. So something like a cotton or a linen, light or medium weight is perfect for this. I would avoid a stretch fabric because it just doesn't work well with the, um, the stickiness on the back of the PVC. So just cut your fabric down to rough size. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our fabric face down on our surface. Just to mention, all you need at home to be able to make up this project is a clean, flat surface. The tools that you will need are some fabric scissors. I always have a little second pair of scissors just for cutting my tape. You can use a craft knife if you wish, um, but I prefer to use a fabric scissor, but it's entirely up to you. If you do use a craft knife, don't forget to put something on your surface um, at home. I will also be needing a pencil, and a tape measure today as well. Other optional tools is a seam roller and you might have one of these at home for another craft hobby that you do um, but this is quite useful if you have one but it's optional. So I've just laid my fabric out face down, I'm just going to pop those rings away there and what we need to do is now place our paper side of our PVC face down as well and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to find the position on the fabric so you might want to just use something on your fabric to line up your pattern with so there we go I'm quite happy with that and then you simply peel back the top corner of the paper and just take around about five centimeters all the way along and then we're going to position that where we would like it to sit with our fabric. So there we go. Just make sure I've got that lined up. And then just with the base of your fist, you're just going to position that on and push it down so it adheres well. Then you simply pop your hand underneath and just pull a little bit away at a time. And again, adhere that down. And just keep moving along, pulling the paper. And as you get used to it, you can pull a little bit more away at a time. So just keep moving the paper away. And that's going on really nicely. So quite simple. And just make sure your fabric stays straight. So just pull it back into shape there. And as you move towards the end, you can literally just pull the rest off. There we go. So just make sure that that's adhered all the way along. We we'll just flip that over. And then I just like to run over with my hand. It's just in case any frays from the edge of the fabric or maybe little um, bits of dirt have got caught underneath, but that's, we're on a clean surface, so it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Just a few frays there on the outside. Great. So it really is that simple, putting that first piece on. And then we're just going to take your fabric scissors or your craft knife. You could also use a rotary cutter. And we're just simply going to trim away the fabric. So just using the PVC edge as a guide. 
I'm just simply going to trim along the edge. Try not to nick it into the PVC with the scissors. It should be straightforward, just along the edge. And making a nice, neat cut. And just trimming at the short edges as well. And there we have it. So that's now all cut out, really easy. And we have our panel ready for the next stage. All we need to do now is remove our kiss cut. So the easiest way to do this is to just simply fold it over and you'll hear like a cracking sound as well. And that's just the PVC breaking open and just gently run our hands all the way along. And then turn around and do the same on the other side. Okay, that one's a bit loud, so you can hear that breaking open. And then all I simply do is pull one towards me and push one away, and then that will just simply allow you to pull that kiss cut away. So what we need to do here is be really gentle. Um, my fabric's not fraying particularly, but we don't want to create frays really. We don't want to encourage them. So just gently move that away and that will reveal the fabric underneath for you. If you do have a fabric that frays quite a lot, you just need to minimize that as much as possible. So if any frays get stuck to the PVC as it's coming away, you can just snip them away. Just nice and gentle, removing that. There we go. So we're nearly finished with the panel. We've just got one more thing to do. So if you take your double-sided tape, and I'm just gonna snip off the, the green end there. And what we want to do now is just simply run a strip of tape along the edge. So along the short edge between uh, the two fabric pieces. So it must stay on the PVC. So just going to position it at the top and this is going to close up the shade once we've put the rings on. So this is actually the seam and we just cut that away. There we go. And we can actually remove the backing from this now so it's all ready for our next stage. So all we're removing is the red. The tape itself is actually clear. So just remove the red there and that's our panel now finished with. So next we need to move on to our frames. So just taking the frames, we actually need to measure these um, to create a centre point. And very easily, if you just take a tape measure and a pencil, and we just need to mark the centre point on one side. So this is 30 in diameter. So at the 15 centimetre point, we just need to put a pencil mark. The second one is even easier because we can just sit that on the top, make sure those two match, and then simply transfer that mark over. And that's just going to be used, be used as a guide when we start to put the frame together later on. So going back to your double-sided tape, I always start now at that point, so it's really clear for me to see. And all we do is position the tape so that the frame itself sits between the two outside edges of the tape. So you can see there that the frame is now in the middle. And then just about five centimetres at a time, just slowly 
put the tape on and don't pull the tape don't make it really tight it just needs to sit on naturally as we move round. and if at any point you do kind of go off course then just simply lift the tape back off and it doesn't have to be millimeter perfect but the idea is for us to get it as central as possible and then when we come to meet our tapes I just simply don't let them overlap so I just simply snip away just so there's a tiny gap there's two reasons one is it means you can see where your tapes start really easily and secondly it means that it's easy to take the backing off so the next stage with the frame is to simply wrap around the tape and all we're trying to do is coat the frame as much as possible with the tape because that's going to stick everything together to make our lampshade so we're just pressing quite firmly down and when you get to the corners it might crease a little but just make sure it's nice and smooth all the way around okay and then with the utility frame we're going to do exactly the same thing so find the mark that we made with a pencil use that as our starting point and just move the tape around the frame. And then as we approach our join, again, just leaving a little gap. Then using our fingers and thumbs again to make sure we get as much tape around the frame as possible. There we go. So that's our two frames now finished. So we're just going to now take the backing off the, off the frames. First of all, I'm just going to do this one because it means I can just sit this on the table. And then before I do the other one, I'm just going to turn this the opposite way because this end at the moment has my tape on and I actually want to be working towards it. So I'm just going to turn that around because I'm going to move to this end of the table. And then I'm going to also just remove my tape from this one. And that should come off nice and easily. So just before we position our frames onto our PVC, this is where we need to think about what we would like our lamp to be. As I said at the beginning, this is a really versatile kit. So you can use it either as a pendant lampshade, which would hang down from a ceiling, or you can have it as a table lamp as well. So you need to have a little look at your fabric. And mine, I would say, is directional. So you need to think if there's something that's growing up your fabric, where you would then position your rings. So just as an example, if you were making a pendant lampshade, you would want your utility frame at the top of the shade and your plain frame at the bottom. If it was the other way round, and for a table lampshade, you would need your utility frame at the bottom and your plain ring like this on the top. So I would like mine to be a lampshade on a table. A table lamp so I'm going to position my uh, utility frame here at the bottom and my plain ring at the top so just turning that over and I'm actually going to pop them this one on this side so I remember so it's just good trick to know is position your rings either side of your shade if you're not entirely sure and that'll make you remember so just moving to the tired side of the table I'm just going to find my marks um, one of them is here so let me know actually sorry it's here so I've got my pencil mark there and my other pencil mark here. I'm just going to leave that one as it is at the moment, just on that side to remind me. And what's really, really key now is making sure that that pencil mark sits on the seam line. So that's the edge here of the lampshade, the short edge. So I've got that one in position. I just want to make sure now it's on the PVC, so it shouldn't be touching the fabric at all. And just right towards the edge 
of the PVC. And if you can imagine, that's going to create the top of our shade. So we want a lovely crisp edge on there. So taking this one now and finding my mark, which is here, I'm just going to simply position that one as well. So just lining up there my mark. And if you find this tricky, don't worry, because you can pull these back. Uh, they will, you can, there we go. I just want to line that up again. So you can see how easy it is to pull that away. There we go. And the other thing to remember is, is that this section of the utility must be facing inwards. So it has to sit within the shade. It shouldn't be sitting out. It should always be sitting in. So now I've got those nicely lined up with my pencil marks. I'm happy with those. Yeah. We're just simply going to move those simultaneously to sit on the PVC. So don't worry too much if you do one and the other. You can see already how tacky that tape is. I can actually let go. We can just then use our hands to reposition. So there we go. That's looking good on this side. And then the same again, take them over. And you can see now I'm using my hands slightly lower on the frames. And there we go. So just take it nice and slow and steady. Actually, that's just not a did there. So let's just pick that up. There we go. And those lovely rounded corners make this really easy. So that one's OK. This one's just come off a little bit. So you can reposition them. And then take the final corner. And once you've got to this point, I like to pull it towards me. It just means that you've got a better view. I'll just pop round now to the centre of the table again. So you can see now I've got this facing me and I just simply line up the edges. So I just want to make sure it's adhered all the way round and that I've got a lovely crisp edge that follows on. So there we go. And what we don't want to do at this point is push on here because we can create a dent. So we're just gently pincering together with your fingers. And then I'm simply going to turn it so that the seam is on the base and it means we can push down with our fingers. Or alternatively, the seam roller that I mentioned at the start of the demo, we can just use this and that gives us a really firm push down on that seam. So you can see now it's starting to really look like a lampshade. So where our seam has met here, you will notice that there's two flaps of fabric um, overlapping each other, one on the inside, one on the outside. And all I'm going to do is simply cut away a square on one side and then flip the shade over and do the same on the other side. And what that does is it just means we don't have two layers of fabric um, rolling over each other. It just makes the job a lot easier when we come to tuck in. The next stage is to just simply push the fabric down underneath the frame and the tape that's on the frame will start to hold that in place. So we're just gently pushing down with our fingers and just make sure that the fabric's nice and tight along the top and then simply turn over and do the same on the other side. And we'll, you'll come across uh, the struts here. We'll deal with those in a second. So just keep pushing that fabric down and round. Okay. So from each of the struts, all we need to do is simply take the fabric and we're just going to do a little snip in line with the strut just up to the frame. And then that should then nicely sit, there we go, sit down on either side of that strut. So we're just going to do that for all four.
and just in line there we go so we just now need to take our finishing tool that I mentioned at the start of the demonstration um, and as I said it's got two sharp edges and a point and then a serrated edge and this is what we're going to use now to tuck all of the fabric up and around that frame so I'm just going to go back to my seam again and I'm just going to find the starting point I always start at the seam and then I know where I am on the inside and we're simply going to take the fabric up and under the ring now that might seem as if it's quite difficult but actually the ring separates quite easily away from the PVC so we're just going to use the point you can use the long serrated edge as well if you want to and we're simply just going to tuck that fabric underneath so it's really nice and neat and that professional finish so there we go and once you get going you start hearing a noise like a cracking sound and that cracking sound is basically the the PVC moving away from the frame and allowing the fabric to go underneath and it's kind of finding a happy medium between pressing not too hard but don't be too gentle either because we do have to push this underneath so there we go if you've got any long frays that are joined, I've got one there that's kind of joined over the sides. I'm just going to snip that and then we will just be able to swoosh that underneath. A little fray there. There we go. So that's one side done already. And then we just simply flip over and do exactly the same. So starting at our seam here, I just lift that up always starting on the inside so tucking the fabric underneath and then when you get to your spoke here we're just going to simply push the fabric either side so pushing that underneath And you just need to pop your hand right in and under there and then carry on from the other side. Another way you can do this is on its side as well, which some people find easier. So you can... There we go. And this is becoming a little bit blunt now for me. So... Just a useful tip is just simply use your non-fabric scissors, cut a section away and you get a new sharp point on there. So I'm just going to bring it back up. And there we have it. One finished rounded square lampshade so I think you'll agree that that looks absolutely beautiful it looks really contemporary really modern and stylish and a lovely addition to any home so thank you for watching today I hope we've inspired you to get creative with some of our lampshade making kits thank you